It's time for another design lesson. Do you want to talk about the bathroom? Sarah's going to teach you how to make a one-of-a-kind vanity. All of these ideas are easy. They are all unique. So stick around. Hands up if you're planning a renovation. I am always planning a renovation of some sort, somehow, some way, and in some location. So my mind is always spinning, and I'm trying to think up new ideas. So one of the key components is I know budget is often a huge factor. And today, I wanna to talk about how to make a fabulous vanity using recycled elements. So we are not talking about ordering up a custom vanity. We're not talking about walking into the store and picking one off the shelf in your local big box store. We're talking about what to do and how to do it if you want to do something unique and different. So first and foremost, you need to know there are lots of different things you can use that you can turn into a vanity. Key criteria to keep in mind are the height of the piece. Generally, you want something that is at least 30 inches high. You can go up to 36 inches high. You want to think about the depth. I would try and stay away from anything that is less than 19 inches deep. More than 20 inches deep to up to 24 inches deep is ideal. Anything more than that, if you have space for it, is a bonus. And then let's talk about width. Really, the width is the space you have available. So I would say a minimum of 24 inches and as wide as you can go. Now let's talk about what you can make that fabulous vanity out of. First, let's talk about desks. So a desk is generally going to be about 30 inches high. You're usually gonna have ample depth. And the key criteria of why a desk makes a fabulous recycled vanity is it probably has storage drawers. And drawers come in handy, but you will see from all of the options that I show you here that I do not feel it is mandatory. Yes, it is nice to have storage drawers within your vanity, but keep in mind, you can always install a wall-mounted medicine cabinet. You can install an additional piece of furniture for storage, and there are lots of solutions to achieve the finish line. So starting off, here is a photo of Fiona's bathroom and this is at Starlight Farm for Sarah Off the Grid as seen on HGTV and this was an antique desk that I bought and I had looked at this piece of furniture for years and thought about buying it and one day I walked into one of my all-time favorite architectural salvage shops, the door store, and there it was sitting there and I had to have it. What's great about this piece is it has 11 drawers and the ideal aspect of a desk is that knee hole where your knees normally go allows plenty of room for the plumbing with minimal modifications. So you can maintain full usability of all of those fabulous storage drawers. So in this case, I removed the top of the desk and then I just replaced it with a three quarter inch thick piece of natural stone. If you're thinking about countertops, they're usually gonna have a build up and those countertops are going to be built up to an inch and a half for kitchen counters but scale and proportion is key so if you are removing an existing wood top off a piece of furniture and adding a new stone top on a three-quarter inch thick piece of stone will usually do the trick look at it here it's lovely it's simple i added a vessel sink on top now i know you're probably thinking sarah let's talk about the drawer that i see right there and does that still function? Yes, it does. In this case, what we did is we removed the drawer right in the center, we shortened it from front to back, we just cut the back off, so it actually has a teeny tiny drawer that's just big enough to keep toothbrushes and toothpaste in. Super duper handy. Okay, next on my list, this might have been a desk, looks a bit more like a console table to me, and this is a charming pine piece. And what I love about this is look at the surround. It has this sculpted pine surround all the way around the piece. If you're looking at it thinking, wait a second, I see a stone top there, and I see that little carved sculptural piece, we just removed that backsplash, that built-in backsplash, put the stone top on and then siliconed it back in place. So again, a super easy install here. And in case you're wondering, Sarah, why do you like reimagining pieces of furniture and turning them into a vanity? Well, it's plain and simple. Number one, great character. Number two, instant results. Number three, often advantageous budgetary 
pricing. And if you buy a unique and interesting piece of furniture, it's great to be able to adapt it. Let me see, other details here. Oh, what you'll notice is sometimes you have challenges with the existing plumbing. It can't always be neatly tucked in behind in the wall. In this case, the plumbing came through the floor. So you see what I did here? We made a plumbing chase that has the baseboard that wraps around it. So it's really very discreet. If I hadn't called your attention to it, would you have noticed it? Hopefully not. Okay, here's another one. Do you remember Sarah's House season three? And this is just inside the door in the mudroom. We created a powder room where there had never been one before. Why? Because when I looked at the plans, it looked like every other bathroom was going to be pretty far away. And after a long drive getting from the city to the country, you might need a pit stop. So for this vanity, what we did was, it was a teeny tiny space and the powder room was as small as it could possibly be. And I found this table at a flea market. I think I paid $125 for this piece. And as you can see, we tried to keep as much of the original charm and character as possible. Look at this little scalloped detail underneath the drawer front. And I thought that was so cute. What you'll see is this has a shelf and a shelf is always handy, but this didn't actually come with a shelf. We added it on. It had a turned leg that then had a little bit of a square section on the leg close to the bottom. And that offers the ideal spot to attach a little shelf in. We even used the existing tabletop. And so you don't always have to add a stone tabletop, but you can if you want extra durability. Can you leave it wood? Yes, you can. However, I highly recommend making sure that you use a good quality urethane to ensure that it is waterproof. But I would recommend only doing this sort of solution when it gets occasional use. I wouldn't do this for something where there's always gonna be water left pooling on top because it may crack over time. Here's another similar idea, a bit dressier. That table before was more rustic, super inexpensive. And here we have something. This is a really beautiful piece of furniture with more stately and sculptural appeal. Look at this back detail. Isn't that gorgeous? Plus it has beautiful turned legs. It has two drawers, the lower shelf. What I love about using a piece of furniture like this is you can just add a towel bar on the side. Just attach it right into the side of the piece of furniture. And what I think is amazing is this is giving new life to something original. So this is upcycling, this is upcycling, this is upcycling, recycling, reimagining all good things and creating new life for an old piece. What other pieces can I show you? Okay, oh, here's a fun one in the deals and steals zone. This is made from a vintage plant stand. And this is a plant stand that I found at a little antique store in cottage country, and it was metal. The great thing about finding a metal table that you can repurpose is that you can actually paint this yourself. You can get some trim clad paint, something that is high adhesion and designed to be used on metal is the best solution possible. As you can see, we pulled it out a little bit from the wall just to make sure that we had all the depth we needed for that countertop surface. And I'm completely fine with the way it looks, with the way it just floats out a little bit from the wall. The sort of trellis detail that it has and a little rosette, the way the railing runs across the front actually creates a perfect spot to hang towels. And again, it's it's got the spot for a shelf. And so I added two big baskets here. The shelf is made of Caesar stone, as is the countertop and the backsplash. We measured up all of these pieces and just had them sent to site and assembled it at the cottage. So it was really super easy. And I think this is fresh, easy, breezy cottage style. And if I recall correctly, it cost about $150. Next up, how can you take a table? So this is just a super simple table. If you go to a flea market, if you go to a consignment shop, if you go to a yard sale, I can almost guarantee you will find a simple, original little work table. You may need to paint it, but that is completely fine. You've seen me do this many, many times, and I often have them custom sprayed 
but you don't have to do that. You can definitely paint this yourself. You can use latex paint. The key is to prime it first, make sure you sand it, give it a coat of primer, and then a couple of top coats. If you want it to have that extra durable finish, you can then add a finishing coat of urethane as well. And now when I describe all of those steps, if you have time on your hands, this is a great project for you to tackle. I'm usually a little bit starved for time, which is why I often have things custom spray painted, but you do not have to do that. This is definitely the type of project that you can tackle on your own. Let's talk about credenzas, consoles, sideboards. These pieces are ideal if you're looking for something a little bit bigger. So first up, I want to talk about Robin's Vanity in the bathroom at Starlight Farm. I think this is one of my all-time favorite conversions. I love this piece. This was a sideboard that I found at a consignment shop. As I recall, it was $445 and it is teak. People have said to me, Sarah, I can't believe you would paint teak. I don't really love the color of teak, so let's be honest, I paint teak. I also always think it's okay to buy vintage furniture and do whatever you want with it because if you're giving it a second life, that is awesome in my view. So this was teak and if you are thinking about repainting teak, I want you to look closely at it and just make sure it hasn't been oiled too many times. If it's got a lot of oil on it, so if it's a really dark orangey tone and maybe feels a bit sticky, it may have been oiled quite frequently and then there's a chance that the paint won't adhere to it. This piece was quite dry so it was an ideal candidate for being painted and four years in there isn't a single chip on it so it looks fantastic. One of the things I've always really appreciated about what happens when you paint a piece of furniture is that it highlights all of the details and all the character. So these door fronts have a very very skinny reeded detail that's just carved into it. Once that was sprayed, oh, it just came to life and looked so beautiful. What's fun is you can change out the hardware. I changed the hardware to a glass and chrome knob, and this piece had all the components we needed. It has four drawers, it has two shelves, it has two doors, it's a beautiful size, it's a unique shape, and honestly, if I'd tried to have this custom made, it would have cost five or six times the cost. I'm a fan of that one. Oh, here's another cutie way back in the archives. Sarah's House season four, I bought this, I called this a console table. I think this would have been an entry hall piece. And I remember I paid $275 for it. And look at what it came with. It had beautiful brass casters. It had these sculptural legs, original hardware, which we removed when we had the piece painted this nice creamy tone. And then we reattached it. So it looks crisp and it looks fresh and it looks lovely. I think this piece is very elegant, but we wanted to make it feel a bit more whimsical because it was going in a teenage girl's bedroom. So cue the fun accents. If you are painting a piece of furniture, you can either choose to paint it a fun color or you can just inject that color, that whimsy, that fun, and that personality through accents. Enter towels, countertop accessories, you name it, there's easy ways to perk it up and make it feel as joyful and colorful as you want. This piece I thought was really great, love this one. And here's a trick, if you are not tiling the walls and you want the wall surface in behind to be as durable as possible, Think about extending your backsplash and doing something a little bit taller. You can go 10 or 12 inches and you can have your backsplash cut in an interesting profile to give it a little bit more drama. A little bit more drama because we all need some drama. Okay, dressers. Another category that works super well for a vanity conversion is a dresser. And I love this one. This is from a project we did in England, and this is a Gustavian dresser, so all things Swedish, Nordic, and fabulous. What I really liked about it is, look at how the edges are just beveled off, how those corners are beveled. There's a reeded detail, a little rosette as well. The color here is soft, pale gray-blue, which ties so nicely into the mosaic that is behind it. And when it comes to using a recycled piece of furniture or a vintage or antique piece of furniture, I always think it's fun to embrace the details and what makes this piece unique. So we beveled the counter to follow that edge profile right at the corners. Doesn't that make it look just a little bit more special? Because this is installed against a tiled wall, there's no need for a backsplash. 
Ah, how about if one dresser is good, a pair of dressers is an amazing find. And this is a pair of antique dressers that I found when we were building Sarah's house season three. That's the original farmhouse. And these are just so country appropriate. I left them in their original finish. These are pine dressers. Look at those bun handles on them. They feel so nice in your hand. They're soft, they're rustic. They already had some age and wear and tear. So they were ready for family life and a fabulous size. If I remember, they were about 42 to 44 inches wide and they stand on these really nice turned legs. So you may be looking at this and saying, Sarah, I see two big drawers right where the sink is. How does that work? Okay, here's the trick. You need a carpenter to help you out with this. You have two choices. You can cut the drawer fronts off and you can just fix them in place so they are no longer usable. Mm, that's never my goal. I like as much usable storage as possible. So what we always do is we take the drawer and we just reconfigure it. So the carpenters cut a portion out of the middle of the drawers where the sink sits. And essentially you end up with a drawer front and then the box gets reduced in size and just sits on either side of the sink. Is that making sense? In this case, one side is ideal for toothpaste and toothbrushes and the other side for hairbrushes. So never underestimate the importance of great storage and never underestimate how easy it is. If you have a carpenter that you work with, I can guarantee they can figure this out. It's not hard at all. Here's another example, same dresser, same profile, but different finish. In this case, it had bird's eye maple drawer fronts and we thought that the character of this wood was really worth celebrating. So we painted the frame white to give it a crisp highlight and then left the drawer fronts in the original bird's eye maple. And that's one of my all time favorite woods. It really is gorgeous. These drawers, instead of having that bun handle in natural wood, this is an original porcelain handle, like a china knob. These are still available now. So you can even find these at a big box store. If you wanna add that old world charm to a newer piece, think about adding a porcelain handle. And you can see also to make it country and pretty, it has a more scalloped back plate. I've talked a lot about using pieces that are vintage or antique, but let's be clear, what you use as a vanity does not need to be a vanity, it does not need to be old, and it can just be a new cabinet that you find. I found this at a decor store, the price was right, and I thought it had really interesting sculptural characteristics. Look at this kind of lattice or trellis front that it has, and I decided to spray it. I want it juicy and fun. I don't know if we should call this avocado green, kermit green, or leaf green. I'm going for kermit, because frankly, that's the color I see. And it just made a perky and fun addition to this playful kids bathroom. If you're thinking about how to unify a cabinet that you buy that has one character with a mirror that you find or may already own that has a slightly different style, think about painting them the same color and that automatically creates the tie-in. So you see here the mirror is more whimsical and curvaceous whereas the style of the vanity is more rectilinear and boxy, but I think the two of them work together. Here's an oldie but a goodie. I love this vanity because it was such a fun conversion. This is a machine cabinet, a tool cabinet. This came out of somebody's shop. It had shelves that were coated in oil, the paint finish was rough, but the size was right. And look how pretty and classic and simple these doors are. There is nothing fancy about this piece, but I think that's really what drew me to it. And if I remember correctly, I think it cost $260. We added a remnant stone top, an enamel sink, and then we gave it a bit of a whitewash finish in terms of the paint. We didn't repaint this with an opaque finish. This just got kind of a thinned out wash of paint. So we still had that rustic original charm and character. And that's something I would encourage you to think about is, do you want the paint finish to be pristine or do you want something that is a bit more textural in its appeal? Finishing touch for this bathroom, I don't know. Do you remember this bathroom? This bathroom had a yellow bathtub and really fabulous drapes that were a Sanderson fabric that had flowers and bees 
And so I took the exact same color that we painted the tub and also applied it to this super well-priced mirror. And it just has this accent and this jolt of spring lemon fresh fun. Love that bathroom. Okay, how inexpensive and affordable can you make a vanity? Well, I think this is about the bottom of the spectrum. Found this cabinet for under $100 at a used furniture store, gave it a fresh coat of paint, did not even replace the top, but painted it with a really durable paint finish. And then we did a cutout for a drop-in sink that was self-rimming. So a self-rimming drop-in sink is the easiest sink. Not replacing the countertop is as easy as it gets. So if you're looking for achievable charm, this just might be your solution. Okay, let's talk about other stuff. So that's the roundup of desks, consoles, dressers, and chests. But what if you want to create a vanity using other components that are affordable and innovative and easy to achieve? So here's one for you to think about. How about barn beams, timbers? When we were building Sarah off the grid at Starlight Farm, we had some extra barn beams kicking around. And so we fashioned them into this vanity for the guest bath. It has ample space, a really big countertop because I think that's what guests want. A piece of remnant marble as the countertop because that's what I could afford. And then we created a shelf underneath so that you can have baskets and everything can be in easy view. I honestly believe that for guest bathrooms you don't need to have drawers because sometimes people don't want to go digging around in the drawers because it's your house and your bathroom. So why not just have it on display so it's easy for them to view and find find what they need. An extra roll of toilet paper, oh, in the basket. A hand towel, oh, there it is. Any supplies and sundries you might need. I think this is a fun one. Now let's talk about house parts. So sometimes you might find bits and pieces that you want to assemble together. If you're thinking, Sarah, I don't have access to all these architectural salvage shops that you're talking about. Okay, let's talk about the big box approach. This is a vanity that I made using entirely components from a big box store. So it started with the countertop. The vanity counter was sold with the sink attached. It doesn't get much easier than that. So it's important that you start with the fixed piece or the piece that you can't change the size of and then find the other components to work with it. Across the front, this is a piece of pine spandrel. So this is just a housing accent something that you would use to dress up a porch, say, on a Victorian style home, and then a pair of table legs that I cut to be the size that I wanted them to be. It was all assembled simply and quickly and painted and presto, a great vanity. Here's another solution using some antique elements. So this is made using two spindles that would be on a stair railing and I think I paid five dollars each for these at a salvage shop and then a piece of fretwork something that was pretty and carved that would have been probably on a fascia board in the peak of a Victorian house and we just used it as a little bit of sort of a filigree accent it almost looks lacy and pretty and goes so well with this shield style mirror okay here's an interesting thing you probably haven't thought of making a vanity out of leftover wainscoting. When the Minister of Exteriors and I were out shopping for elements to use when building our house at Starlight Farm, we came across this fabulous wainscoting. It had this chunky proportion to it. It was solid wood, it was super affordable, and this particular piece had a little bump out. So we set it in place. There is absolutely no storage. You cannot access anything underneath, but this is just in a powder room. So there's no storage needed. There's a closet across the hall, problem solved. And then the backsplash is done to mimic the exact same profile of the front of the piece. So always think about how you can embrace those details and reinforce them and then repeat them. Because when you do that, it doesn't really jump out at you, but I can guarantee that people will look at it and think, oh, that's neat. And then look at the backsplash and say, oh, that's neat too. So you put neat and neat together and you've got a good idea. Last one to share with you. This is a super simple vanity, again, 
made from big box store components. So these are a pair of steel legs. They're sold as a pair of two legs and they're made of steel and they are steel because of the price point. And all we did was we made a super simple wood frame at the top that was clad in a piece of leftover siding, rough siding board that had been painted gray and I just sanded it back ever so slightly to give it a bit more texture and character. And then we added a shelf. So honestly, for a contemporary solution that is affordable, it really doesn't get much easier than this. All of these ideas are easy. They are all unique. You can interpret them, adapt them, combine two together. I hope that this will give you a few ideas of how you can tackle and create an innovative recycled vanity solution for your own bathroom. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a good idea. Thanks for watching.